What's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin. Welcome to The McGuffin Show. We're on episode 32 here. Happy to be back. I uh, was gone for a couple weeks. Um, just came home last night. It's pretty stinking cold. Was in Cabo. Um, happy to see this guy. Got a little this morning. But, uh, you know, uh, good to be back in CDA. Good, good to see this man. If you guys uh, check out the new hats here, we have the new TM hats. I'll be selling these. Uh, I'll be selling these at the PPA tent during PPA events. Um, I'll also be bringing them to uh, to camps or campers. If you guys wanna wanna cop a hat, you can grab one there, or they will be on the website. K Mac has been rocking the. Uh, you know, red. This guy, I swear, he's just a walking billboard. Like, wears all my gear. <laughs> Love this man to death. But he's been wearing that freaking red hat for a long time. It's true. He's getting a little, little and, you know, crusty, it's kind of funny. And, crusty right, right. and K-Mac's not a, not a flat bill guy. And I think I've won him over, but he'd, he'd worn the red hat so much. I was looking at this morning. It's not a flat bill anymore. It's like, this is supposed to be square. This is more circular now. I tried to, I tried to contort it a little, <laughs> fighting an uphill battle. But no, the pink is looking flashy. You, you know, know. got to get some TM. Get a little color this man pink life, in your you life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, got a little training in this morning. We uh, really can't talk about it, but... Uh, uh, but we played on, on, on something that is a little different, uh, and, uh, it's like light and very efficient and I'm not going to really say anything more cause I can't, but, uh, anyhow, there's, there's some cool stuff coming out and, sure. uh, we got to experience it this morning. Um, I got this guy here at six or he, he left Spokane at five. Uh, I, I texted him at like five fifteen, and I'm like, Hey, are you on your way? I think we're having a battle for who can have the least amount of sleep before one of these podcasts. Because <laughs> you got in what time? Uh, you flew yeah. in. The, yeah. I uh, flew in from Cabo last night at like 2. Got got home at 2.33. I uh, got like yeah, two and a half hours of sleep. Texted this guy. Was hoping he was going to be like 30 minutes late. So I could just <laughs> that's, that's why I got sleep like an extra 20 minutes. He said he's going to be 10 minutes late and he's on his way. And I'm like, shoot. <laughs> so Make that 45 minutes late. Like, take the detour. Take the long route. Got, got in the hot tub real quick. And then, um, yeah, got, got a nice little two hours in, but happy to see this man. Um, if you guys, uh, saw this last, was it this last, last weekend? weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, K Mac and Mr. Goble, who you probably have not, most people haven't seen in a while. It's true. True. Uh, haven't played a lot of tournaments lately. Uh, yeah. They, uh, they got a goal, baby. Come on. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. It was fun. So, uh, you know, Matt and known Matt as, as long as you, since I moved over, it was the first time Matt and I played a, played a tournament together. Definitely a smaller one, but yeah. Uh, some good teams in there. Um, it, was, it was a blast. We took a little bit of a little bit of cash home, and yeah. and honestly, I um, it was a lot of fun to just play. I think where my game is at now, I thought there was some natural chemistry between Matt and I. He knows what I do well. I know what he does well. So it was fun to share the court with them, and uh, yeah. we we're able to get the W and hey, get it done. Tell tell the viewers like when you're when you're thinking about chemistry, you're thinking about playing with certain partners. Uh, what are a couple of things you look for? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, I, I would say um, not to your level, but I would say I'm more of the, the grinder at times. I think I maybe I'm a little more of an aggressive dinker, but if there's something that I lack, it would be um, the offense to put the point fully away. So when I play with guys like Rafa, play with guys like Matt, I don't have to press the issue and try to finish the point before it's really ready yep. because I know that as long as I'm moving the ball around, um, they're going to – lift dinks to Matt, to Rafa, they're going to pop it up to them and they're a little bit more comfortable completing it. So right. when teams isolate me or hit a lot of balls to me, it's actually what I want them to do because I feel like I can get us ahead, right. um, not necessarily um, finish it every time at that at that pro level. So right. it's very comfortable for me to just move the ball around and let Matt do his thing, as you know. For, sure. you know, for those that don't know, Matt's uh, Bounce still, Apex go. still probably a, at least a top five attacker around um tons of variety a very high attacking iq as well so sure. it was a lot of fun uh and something that kyle mentioned is that kyle likes uh uh or sorry matt likes to speed up off the bounce so k-mac would hit push dinks he'd force his opponent to have to lift they'd lift in front of matt and then mac has got uh, plenty of options from there um sure. uh, and, and and know that you know for all the viewers out there if you're looking to speed up off the bounce and you don't take a step back or you only have Ollie and you're wondering, you're like, gosh, you know, why don't I have any balls to speed up on? You got to ask yourself, like, are you not hitting a push dink? Are you not uh, hitting your dink with enough intent that is forcing your opponent to lift up? Uh, that gives you a ball that kind of sits in front of you, because obviously if you're not dinking aggressively, it's going to be tough to speed up off the bounce. Um, now, lower levels, if you're playing somebody that like only lifts and they're really not hurting you, you probably have, have license to speed up off the bounce. But higher levels, if you're looking to create offense off the bounce, push, uh, move the ball around, aim a little deeper in the kitchen, force your opponent to have to lift, and then you have a green light ball to work with. Uh, a phrase that K-Mac and I use is, is bounce, apex, 
pick your poison. Bounce Apex and pick your poison. Speed that baby up. And what's interesting too, because I had, uh, you know, it was a local tournament. So a lot of people that I teach, you know, some, some higher level four fives that are very familiar with my game and what I'm comfortable with. And they noticed, they were like, well, it seemed like you were like exceptionally patient because when I'm playing against them, I'll flick a little bit more and I'll go at them a little bit more. But I showed a lot of that restraint, especially in the finals and the bigger matches, not I think because I was incapable of it, but the other team was putting a lot of balls in play, but they weren't coming at us much. Right. And I knew who my partner was. So I didn't have to provide our team's offense because I knew Matt was capable of doing that. Sure. If I played with somebody who was also just as good of a player, but a little bit of a different style, press a I would have had to press the issue a little bit more. So you right. can kind of calibrate what you have to do or need to do based on the personnel on the other side and based on who you're playing with. Right. And something you told me this morning, which I thought was very interesting, is that uh, you kind of control the baseline yep. or, or, you know, you uh, uh, like to take most of the drops, let Matt disconnect. Yep. Matt, Matt's obviously not as good in transition. And then Matt can be dangerous with the poach or he can be dangerous from the kitchen line. But, yeah, I, I think we're more comfortable. Like I said, I, I can take a good 65 percent, the majority of the drops at the baseline. Right. And then once we got to the kitchen line, um, even sometimes when I was on the left, if they would lift a dink or was my forehand, if Matt had enough time to slide over yeah, yeah. and also play a forehand, I was still deferring to him. Right. So when we had that chemistry going, it felt pretty natural and we, yeah. were, we were pretty comfortable. Um, and if you don't mind, who did you meet? Uh, you don't have to say their names, but who, who, <laughs> who did you meet at the tournament? And I, I don't know uh, if there's a lot of people that actually know who these guys are, but they've, they've been hiding. Yeah, yeah. And they so have a pretty I, badass blog. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, they're doing a great job. The NML, No Man's Land uh, Pickleball guys. So I dun, knew, dun, dun. I'd heard a rumor, I can't even remember from who, uh, that they were the uh, the hidden the hidden geniuses behind it. And I played them a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, oh, okay. in a couple of tournaments. I, I and, and they were solid, but I played them with Alex Fox. And I didn't feel like, I can't remember the scores, but didn't feel like they put us under a ton of pressure. Um, but they've <clears> definitely <throat> improved, uh, made us work for everything in the finals this time. So I did ask them just to confirm. They're like, yes, that's <laughs> us. So um, uh, definitely complimented them on what they're doing. I think they found a, a really cool niche for pickleball yeah, for and sure. uh, I enjoy reading their stuff. No, it's good, keep it going, good insight. Guys. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, they're, they're, they're blunt. They're definitely not afraid to speak their opinion. Um, Which and, I think is needed too, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's, sure. that's what I told them. I mean, we, we'll, we'll go there a little bit. No, here, no, but, we're <laughs> totally handcuffed. Right, I mean, right. when, when, when I've tried to go there, I usually get uh, DMs and text messages <laughs> from, from the people that I talk about that are not very happy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if I had it my way, I would hide behind a blog and I'd be freaking brutally honest, but there's no way. Yeah, and we, and when I have sponsors that uh, sponsor the pod, it makes it even uh, you know makes it makes it a little tougher. We gotta we gotta work a certain level of diplomacy. Of course, here, right? yeah. Uh, but, but it's no, just funny. Yeah, they they've been willing to give people I don't know constructive criticism. Yeah, for sure, which it's great. Think, and, think, and, and nobody's really doing that right now. Exactly. With a blog, um, I mean, like the freestyle boys are pretty open about their opinion uh, on their pod. Uh, could be good. Could be bad. Well, we're similar, right? Yeah, like we're, sure. we're willing to give some opinions too, but right. I think when you see, when but, you, when you go to a tournament the next week and you see make, people. Make nice of it. That's true. Right, I think so. Right, are, are they, percent. yeah. Right, right, right. I think there's, it's one thing to bring up a problem, uh, but it's something totally different to like bring up a problem and make, and make nice of it and, and not just smother it. For sure. Um, for sure. But uh, easier, easier said than done. Got to show uh, both sides. No, it's, it's tricky. You kind of have to hit it from all angles because if not, um, you know, just doesn't get uh, perceived the right way <laughs> for sure you know what I mean well put <laughs> <laughs> okay topics here uh phoenix ppa mexico uh region duper ratings kind of cool they just blasted that out uh gpr international tournaments i just signed with a company UFC this weekend, uh, Pickleball Getaways, Boulder and Breakdown. Phoenix PPA, uh, Chuck Taylor, Chuck T. It's kind of funny, I actually, pra I actually practiced with Chuck on Wednesday. And um, um, yeah, love Chuck. He's probably one of the nicest guys in Pickleball. For sure. uh, if somebody says that he's not a nice guy, shame on you. Because uh, I, I would say there's probably two or three um, uh, kind souls in, in Pickle that truly just have like the biggest heart. Wes Gabrielson. Chuck Taylor. There's one more. I'm trying to think. But uh, no, I mean Chuck. Chuck had a great tournament. Um, kicked my ass in men's. I mean Jay and I lost four and four, and probably lost four and four in, in under 15 minutes. Definitely one of my. <laughs> was a quick one. One of my worst loss. Uh, uh, in in to be honest, uh, Jay and I definitely did not find our best that day. We probably never got above like a like a C minus. 
Uh, we we're both kind of fighting to like find chemistry and, and fight, you know, fighting over balls in the middle. First tournament together. First yeah. tournament together. Uh, you know, and this is all just, just excuses, but uh, we, we show up like Monday night. We'd plan on, you know, practicing Tuesday, Wednesday, showed up at the PPA courts Tuesday. There was no practice courts. They got pushed around. Didn't get a whole lot of practice. Said nothing against the PPA. They just said there was going to be practice courts and there was not. And then Wednesday uh, at, you know, Jay and I, uh, these are all just excuses, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday, Jay. So like uh, Wednesday, we had media day, you know, and like everybody was supposed to do like a 30 minute segment, interview, photos, all that stuff. Um, I was set for like later on in the day. Uh, Jay was set for nine. Jay and I were supposed to play doubles. And we had a team showing up at 11 uh, at, a, at a private court. We weren't going to mess with the practice courts. And um, anyhow, like the media day went long. Uh, Jay didn't get done till like one. Uh, Jay and I didn't get to practice, and it totally showed on Saturday. So not only it was, was a that, shit show. So not only was that the first tournament you played together, but that was the first time you'd shared the same side. Yeah, no, or, yeah, no, no, yeah, for yeah, sure, for sure. I mean, from do you guys mostly play straight up, or do you kind of we have we we played it straight up? Yeah, I, I think uh, we we both believe we can win in a wide variety of ways. Yeah. I have no pride. Um, I mean, I've got a I've got a little pride, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think you know whether it's him on the left, me the setup guy, me on the left, him him the setup guy. We just kind of kind of figure it out. But uh, uh, I I do know that. Um, you know, we, we made some matches competitive with like a low C game. Uh, I can only get better. Uh, love that man. But yeah, we just weren't yeah, able to I'm like bring the good. It was just to, like to get it, it was gelling and, yeah, clicking and like, going forward. Like I was yeah. telling you, it was just like routine stuff, like missing drops, missing dinks, uh, not getting established, losing a couple of hands beat battles. But I mean, to be honest, it was just unforced errors. And, and that stuff's very uncharacteristic for both of you, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So I don't expect that to that to continue. Yeah, um, but uh, all good. It was, it was a nice little wake-up call. Um, and, I mean, losing 4-4 four and four on championship court, being slapped in the face by, by Cassidy and Tater, or Taylor, it was, it was a nice wake-up call. And uh, definitely got us going. Won a couple on the back draw. Uh, lost to Frazier and uh, lost to Frazier and Johnson, like 12-15. And then they ended up win winning. See, not a bad team. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah for sure. Getting better all the time. Our we'll be better. <laughs> We're going to be a lot better. Uh, you, can, you can believe that. But I thought the PPA ran a killer, killer event. Uh, sweet venue, nice to have the Marriott, like walking distance from the courts. Um, and uh, yeah, championship court was rock and rolling. They had an exhibition with Michael Phelps, Larry Fitzgerald. I thought that was a nice little touch. Uh, there was a ton, got a ton, of, ton of people ton there, of people. a ton of views on Late that. at That's night, awesome. it was cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, talk about some diehards. Um, and uh, looks Al like Phelps. Phelps maybe need a little work. Phelps was maybe a little, a little stiff. Work Larry's game, Larry's know? got some game. Oh, oh come yeah, on yeah, now. Yeah. Larry Larry was the baller. Get those competitive juices flowing. <laughs> Get the juices flowing. Well then, um, so the other breakout player was I don't know if it's Alice or Elise. Uh, I'm not. I think it's, I think it's Elise. Uh, Elise Jones. Yeah. But yeah, talk about Scrappy. They got she, a win over she, uh, Wright and right uh, Kovalova. Yeah, yeah. Number. Yeah. I think they're the ranked the number one team yeah, right now, so that's yeah. a, a big upset. They yeah. got a lot of good wins. Right, and Kovalova did not look exceptionally great. Uh, lost like four and six to Jay and Jesse, yeah. and then bumped down. Probably played pretty quick right. and lost to Taylor. Might have been a Jones. little frustrated, but yeah, yeah. Jay yeah. and Jesse have been pretty consistent for that's sure. Newish, they won. Yeah, the last yeah. Few I mean, had a had a great end of the year last year. Won APP Mesa. Yeah. Made the finals of this one. Uh, was able to take a game off of off of Ben and Al. Ben and Al looked looked sharp. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks like uh, Al is more than comfortable on the right, playing twenty percent of the court. K Mac, I mean, I can't what take this doing? guy. What am I doing? Right? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she looked incredibly comfortable on the right. Good to see that team playing together. Uh, and uh, if you saw a couple of the uh, backhand Ernie's that she had, but pretty slick, like Jay. It wasn't like a non-attackable dink up the line, but I mean the ball definitely got down. She was able to like tiptoe around, be very creative with her footwork, and like catch one down there. Was it a two? It was. It she was a two, and kind of and kind of okay. flick it, flick it middle, and then Ben would just kind of sit and pinch. Uh, she's good. just a prodigy, man. Woo! Every time she's you good. think she's got you know one style or limitation, no, no, she's she, got, she shows she, she can. She's got options. Got the whole package. Yeah. 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 Uh, Love, love the Waters family. Nice family. Um, but yeah, nice little tournament or nice uh, first tournament of the year. Um, took silver in singles. J Dub beat up on me. Uh, to be honest, my record in singles on Championship Sunday. K Mac may know this. In singles is 0 for 11. I didn't know it was that many. I didn't know it was that many. Oh, for it was, 11. And it was lopsided in the wrong direction. That you oh, had. yeah, baby. Uh, I mean, and, and I did watch that. It looked like uh, he played well. J Dub played well. I mean, his. When he's returning that flat, that deep, it's tough to kind of 
get the sort of forehands no, that you're for looking sure. for, for makes sure. you work for everything. It comes to show I can't be, can't be so one dimensional. Um, but uh, story of my life, I make it to Sunday and, uh, uh, and to be honest, I, I really haven't found my, have found my best self on Sundays. Uh, I don't know if it's because uh, I'm just content with being there. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say that. I don't, I don't think that's the case, but, um, uh, anyhow, I, I just need to be better. I need to, uh, uh, find, find something, uh, within me that can spark me up or make me more hungry or make me more competitive or raise the level 10%, but I'm just kind of missing uh, my, missing my A game or missing my best self on Well, it's, it's a tough adjustment too because, I mean, even your, your B game, it's getting you there, right? You're beating a lot of good players to get there, but getting over mm -hmm. the hump might just be a different tactical, sure. uh, you know, intent going in yeah. or taking more risk at times when you normally don't. You're kind of no, saying, screw it and just going for it because I think, the comfort I think zone you're good at managing bit. risk, right? That's why right. you don't have a lot of bad losses. There's not right. a lot of people that you're supposed to beat that you don't, right? right. But uh, yeah, maybe championship, just go for it a little bit I more. Mean, trust it, believe Take, it. <laughs> Swing out on some backhands. Yeah, right, 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 for sure. <laughs> Get after it. Uh, um, but Ben, Ben lost early, and I thought that I didn't watch the match, but yeah. uh, uh, on paper, I, I, I know that it was one I was very curious about, just because Dylan, right out of the gate, you know, early on in his singles, kind of won in a similar way to Ben. Right, he wasn't, you know, not a tennis guy, isn't just gonna blast ground strokes, Cat but mouse. was able to beat Ben at what Ben's a specialist at. And I know he's done that to Frank Anthony Davis. And I've talked with Frank after matches, like, well, crap, right. played the style I wanted, but Dylan was was better at my own style. Sure. So it was definitely, I wasn't expecting a win, but I was expecting it to him to push him a little bit. Right. Frazier, for Dylan. Frazier had match points uh, twice last year uh, against, against Zane, and I think, one of the times it was like game three is up 10 0 or 10 1 or something like that. I mean, the guy's the guy's talented, and just like what you mentioned, uh, he's talented with no racket sport background. Right. Um, his forehand's goofy, like the, everything on the forehand side is tipped down, and he just tipped curls down. around it when he drives, <clears throat> he just curls around, yeah. It. And yep. like the drive is very wristy, like doesn't really use his hips, it's all arm, drops the backhand. Yep. Uh, I mean, pretty simple game, but talk about a guy who's just educated, yep. uh, you know, high IQ on court and, and fights like there's no tomorrow. Well, I think there's a few thresholds that you have to get through to push guys of your caliber. You have to be fast, you know, right. be fast enough to be able to lunge and dart and play you kind know, of those difficult volleys on the stretch. But, um, he's got amazing touch, really high does, IQ sure. and doesn't panic. You know, you can tell he's a gamer at heart, right. really understands how to compete. And so... It's an enjoyable player for me to watch just because yeah. very few people can come, come into singles without a tennis background yeah, and, and, and be it. able to handle these guys that have played pro tennis, yeah, you know, exactly. uh, high level college tennis. And so big, uh, big win for him. Yeah, for sure. sure. And he was up. I mean, uh, it's kind of funny is that Jocelyn and I were watching the match. It was on center court and uh, like the day had just started. It was pretty cold as well. So the ball was flying. Gotcha. But Jocelyn said like, uh, Dylan was up like eight zero, and Jocelyn was like, "Yeah, I, I guarantee Dylan's gonna win." And I'm like, "Stop!" Man. You just felt you felt yeah. like Ben's gonna I come. Mean, He's gonna make his run. I've yeah. been up ten one in mixed <laughs> against Ben, and and felt like I was gonna lose, and it <laughs> happened. Uh, and anyhow, uh, I I didn't think Dylan was gonna pull it out, and Dylan beat him in two. And like I think it was eleven one the first game, or eleven zero. I know he was up early. I don't yeah. know what it ended up being, but it was big lead early. And, and then, then and then game two was like twelve ten. Um, but uh, Ben, yeah, Ben lost first round, first time that's ever happened. Uh, there's a new format this year, I don't know if you noticed that, but there's uh there's play in matches. So okay. from like eight to ten, there's play in matches, and then we start at ten. And so all the seated guys yeah. get going until about And I think right. the round of 32 starts at 10. Yeah, 32, 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyhow, so it's nice. Like, I don't, we don't, uh, if you're seated to get there or if you're in whatever. the top, I don't know, 20 or whatever, then uh, then yeah, you uh, don't have to play those playing matches. You can show up a little later. Um, but uh, Dylan played well, man. Dylan had it's, a, it's a big win. It's yeah. big win. And I think it's good for pickleball. I mean, I, you know, it's dominance is great, of course, but, but mean, seeing more depth, see some new blood. you know, uh, matches that could go either way. It's exciting as a fan. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, kudos to Benny, man. Uh, the guy didn't pull out and, uh, he, uh, he win a lot of good matches. Swallowed take, it down. I guarantee he swallowed his pride. Oh, yeah. I, I watched him all day. He, he didn't talk to anybody <laughs> and, uh, he freaking handled business yep. like a man and got it done. And, uh, uh, I, I don't believe he was too uh, too incredibly happy to be there. Played Thomas Wilson in, in the in the bronze, and uh, it was like a late match. It was like six or seven p.m. Uh, and, and beat Thomas in two. But, I saw uh, a couple of the highlights. Yeah, in that match. you see that it, said ATP. Yeah, it was yeah, unreal. It was stupid, yeah. unreal. Like, what does it take? Benny to, doing Benny things. What does it take to win a point? Know, right? Gosh, the guy. Uh, 
comes up with stuff that most people don't have. Okay, I, I went to Mexico for uh, for a week. We uh, taught a 32 person camp in Phoenix as well at the Marriott. Uh, we had K Mac, Cammy McGregor, Sperling, uh, dynamic duo, dream team, best teaching team out there. Come on, <laughs> uh, had 32 campers had a great time. Um, campers were happy, and uh, we we didn't have didn't have anybody complaining. Even though we love our complainers, hey, bring the complaints, bring them. As, okay. as long as they're bringing we good will questions, answer them. they can be complaining questions. Just get that get that discussion going. <laughs> keeps our keeps our blood flowing. But no, it keeps us on our toes. <laughs> right. It does. But it's a, yeah, it's a fun. We've we've done that a couple of times. It's a fun uh, foursome. Yeah, to yeah, teach for with. sure, for sure. Kevin does a great job. John yeah. does a great job. Uh, the Marriott was beautiful. The weather was nice. Uh, it was a little chilly in the mornings, but um, nothing like AZ and Jan. Had know. to take some layers off as the day as the mm -hmm. day got going. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, okay, so just got back uh, from Mexico. Had a great time. Taught a couple camps. Taught at Chileno Bay, uh, one of the nicest clubs in the world, and taught at Carencia. Uh, definitely uh, up there, one of the nicest clubs in the world as well. Uh, I have no business teaching at any of those places, but I will. I will gladly be there. Um, don't mind slumming it. Slumming I, I it down in Mexico mind. for a little I don't bit. Mind. <laughs> Want to give a big shout out to my man Josh uh, Gilman. He is the director at Chileno Bay. Uh, out of all of the discovery properties that I've done, by far like best customer service, best hospitality, comp us everything. The guy's a complete stud. Um, so. Truly appreciate you, buddy. And then also to Matt Pangasser. Matt kind of put on all my clinics down there, helped uh, format all the clinics. Got put in a ton of time and effort and uh, truly appreciate you, buddy. Matt and uh, Matt and Josh are my boys. And we actually went out in Cabo one night, um, had some fun, nothing X-rated, brought, <laughs> brought, brought my wife, but we stayed out till like two or three o'clock in the morning, went to some clubs. It was just, it's crazy. Now. You gotta do that at least crazy. one night. Crazy. If you're gonna be down there long enough, you uh, gotta dedicate at least one night to oh, yeah. work the nightlife. But um, yeah, so we stayed at Esperanza, uh, five star, five diamond resort. Also have no business staying there. The place is so nice. Uh, Meg, mother-in-law, babies, uh, had such a good time. Banks swam the whole time and ate a bunch so of you good had the whole, whole crew down there with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So mother-in-law lives in Los Briles, so she ended up coming down to San Jose, stayed with us at Esperanza. Um, if you guys saw my stories, we stayed at like this villa. This thing was like massive. Literally like, it was it was a type of, type of room where like the resort is so nice, but the room literally is nicer than, than the resort. And so like, you don't even <laughs> want to leave your villa. Yeah, um, I'm good. I'm yeah, good here. yeah, I mean, hey, 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 I'm just gonna camp out right here. But um, yeah, we we ate and uh, uh, ate like kings, and uh, yeah, had a had a had a nice time, and uh, look look forward to going back there. Uh, I'm actually working on something with Discovery, uh, maybe being like a traveling teaching pro for Discovery come 2023. Working out all the details, but uh, lots of fun stuff coming up. Um, let's see here. Region based duper rating. Kind of cool. Um, yeah. KMAC just, just reminded me, uh, of seeing those flyers and stuff yesterday. I thought that was kind of, kind of cool to have region based, uh, you know, ratings. Yeah. And I, I don't know, you know, everything that goes into their algorithm. I know it's a different process than some of the other ratings, but, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see they put the, um, I believe the top 50 players in each region and then kind of showed how the regions and the average rating compared to one another. I think the, uh, I don't know if they, what they call it, but the South where the Florida area, I think might've been the highest on that list. There are a lot of high six O plus. And I think the rating goes up to seven because yeah. you're around like a, a six, eight, six, yeah. eight, you yeah. know, pushing, pushing the, the door of the seven. But yeah. um, yeah, was able to show up by each, uh, each, each region, which was kind of, kind of fun. And it's seen a lot of Facebook uh, interaction where people are like, Hey, I'm, I'm 26. I made it, you know? And so right. <laughs> it helps people get interacted a little bit more, but, uh, it was nice for me. I, I had a rating and I hadn't created a duper account. So I felt, I felt included. So uh, oh. they had this Marvin guy on there. I don't know what that was. Marvin. <laughs> little do you guys know Marvin. Um, but yeah, I thought that was, uh, I thought those flyers looked nice and yeah. that was very insightful to, to kind of see what those, Regions were like uh, the best. The best players in those regions are the or the players with the highest uh, duper rating. Um, it was interesting too because I was just kind of walking, uh, watching through. Most of the seniors, um, you know, the highest kind of senior pros weren't really pushing the above six kind of rating. So I don't know how that algorithm works. If seniors don't have an opportunity for as many points playing against each other, or if they just base those points off 
when they played down in the under seniors. Be yeah. interesting to kind of look at kind of the pros and cons of some of the different uh, different ratings and, and, and whatnot. Right, right. Geek out for it for a couple hours. For sure. Um, okay, I just signed with a company called GPR. And uh, if you guys have seen, I'm going to be hosting some international tournaments this year. Uh, trying to get seen worldwide. And I think for my brand, for the YouTube channel, uh, for all my platforms, uh, makes sense that I get out of the States and, um, you know, just try to make myself bigger. And so anyhow, so I'm going to be hosting the Asian Open. I'm going to be hosting the European Open and the Spain Open. Uh, Meg is going to be traveling with me to Europe and to Spain. Super cool. I'm doing a solo mission to uh, Phuket. Um, but each each of these tournaments, I'll be there for a week. I'll be teaching some camps. I'll be uh, probably playing in the events. And um, yeah, kind of cool. My my first time traveling to Europe. My first time traveling to Thailand, and definitely my first time traveling to Spain. This is gonna, probably going to be one of my bigger years, and I'm going to try to take advantage. And and um, you know anything that's in the pipeline where it could you know help uh, you know, uh, just help build the brand, help help bid help build followers, uh, help build subscribers on YouTube and just overall help build the brand, uh, sign me up, coach, put me in. Well, it's good okay. for pickleball too, yeah, right? To have sure. somebody of your status that's going internationally that shows people, you know, what, what the game can look like in person. Cause I mean, honestly, I, I, you know, it's great to get the, the filming and the exposure, but like it's another level seeing the highest level sure. in person to show the athleticism and kind of have that appreciation for what the best, you know, really look like. So yeah. it can only help the sport, only help grow it. And sounds like a win-win. Yeah, for sure. I know, you know, Irina and some other players have done like Bainbridge Cup and gone over there and, and done some of that stuff. But uh, yeah, I was never one to, uh, to, to really dabble with travel and uh, international. So I'm going to take advantage this year. Get after it. Get after um, it. Got some good UFC fights this weekend. Stylebender uh, Adesanya is uh, fighting Robert Whitaker. Uh, it's their second fight, title fight. It's going to be good. Who won uh, the first one? Uh, Adesanya. Adesanya. Yeah, Israel Adesanya. Adesanya. Guys. All that variety. Oh, that yeah. Big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> who, who you got? Guys who like a picking? ninja. Uh, I mean, Whitaker, their, their first fight was like dealing with some family stuff. He was in like a, a bad headspace, had a lot of stuff going on. Um, the guy is just a brick, but like different type of fighter. Um, he's not, he's not, he's not one dimensional, but, uh, yeah, he's just not as like loose and relaxed and flowy. Uh, but he's got big power, uh, big, big body kicks. Um, I, but I think just as far as technique fundamentals and how savvy Adesanya is, I think, I think Adesanya is going to be pretty sharp, good. pretty yeah, sharp guy. Yeah. He's, he, I think this is his uh, third or fourth time defending his belt. Um, looks good and just talks so much smack and the guy is so confident. I mean, like if I'm fighting a guy like that, who's so slick, who's got so much swag, like it's tough to see past that. And that's what's, that's, what's funny about UFC. Like these guys just build themselves up to just be so big. Right. And you almost like, have to be, yeah, right. right, you're going to put yourself in that environment. I mean, nothing can get through to you. Like you're so <laughs> confident and there's so much swag. Uh, you never second guess yourself. Um, yeah, it's wild. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, different moment, type of confidence. The moment you start guess, guessing, second guessing yourself, I mean, show just a little bit of indecision, I, lack yeah. of confidence, like blood in the water. No, for sure. Everybody around <laughs> just smell, <laughs> smell that, yeah, sense right. it. So yeah, I mean, fighters are arrogant, but you almost have to be. You have right? to If you be. want to be on you top, be you almost on have shoulder, to be. You have to be a little delusional. Yep. And, and we've talked about this. A little delusion goes a long it way. And to be honest, when I show up on Championship Sunday, that's what I probably need. Because I probably respect the people that I've been playing a little too much. And there's not enough delusion. A little bit goes a long hey, way. Hey, like a little said, bit right? goes a long ways, but it does. It does. It's. I mean, it totally does. Um, it's funny how that works, you know. Uh, you know, my, my former boss in sales told me um, a statement that I always remember it says success leaves clues, and you can use that in a lot of areas in life. But look at high profile athletes, right? Sometimes they can be a little off putting because they're a little bit arrogant, but. When you're on top of the mountain and everybody wants to take your spot, yeah. you've got to be super, super confident. You got to believe in it yeah. every little bit to your core, even if it's a little bit delusional. Right, right, <laughs> for sure. Um, so there's this uh, heavyweight fighter from Australia. His name's uh, Tua. Okay, I can't uh, pronounce his last name, but he's fighting Derek Lewis, the Black Beast. Um, kind of funny. So in, it's like it's known in Australia to do shoeies. What are shoeies? I'm, I'm not familiar. Yeah, yeah. We just grab an ice cold beer. Take your shoe off. You're pouring, oh, you're the, pouring shoe. the shoe and then you slam it, right? That's so gross. I kid you not, this guy, is, this guy is a is a maniac. And his antics, like during the fight, and then his antics after the fight is great. Um, but is that his like ritual? Yeah. <laughs> so so after the fight, and he's knocked everybody out. So like the the, the fight's gonna be so good. Uh, it's gonna be two gigantic men just throwing heat. 
And anyhow, so anytime he wins, he like climbs his like big ass. He climbs up on the octagon cage, right? Gets on top. Somebody throws him a beer. Somebody throws him a shoe. He does a shoey. He does a shoey <laughs> as he's sitting on top of the cage. It's kind of a badass <laughs> calling card right there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a heavyweight. Yeah, heavyweight. heavyweight yeah, yeah. And then, and then not only does, does he do a shoey in the octagon, but when he leaves and he goes back to his locker room, people... I mean, all the fans will give him beers and like give him, give him their shoe. He and he'll just do shoeies left and right as he goes back. <laughs> um, the funniest thing is that Derek Lewis. <laughs> so after his last fight, he won. He he took out his cup. He threw his cup out to somebody in the crowd. Guess what they did? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> they did a copy. They did a copy. So, so it's kind of funny. So Tua, he was, he was, uh, he was in like a, uh, uh, they were in like a conference yesterday, and and they were talking about copies and shoeies and stuff like that. <laughs> and Tua basically said, or like the journalist asked him, they said, hey, they said, if you beat Derek Lewis. Would you take his copy and and uh, or would you take his cup and do a copy? And uh, two is like, damn right I would. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to see that. So we have that to look forward to. Shoeys and cuppies. Shoeys and cuppies. I learned. Oh my I God. learned something today. No, I mean, just I ridiculous. <laughs> But uh, anyhow, uh, going to be some good fights. If you guys want to see any shoeys or any cuppies take place on this Saturday, uh, pay for the pay-per-view event. Shoey and a cuppy. Uh, the uh, uh, Ben and the Pickleball Getaway Boys just had a trip uh, in Mexico. Looked like they had a bunch of people down they there. They had a bunch of people there. So they did week one. Now they're on week two. Uh, if you guys want to do a destination boot camp like that, looks like those guys do a great job. Um, I, I, I know, uh, you know Ben is very educated. Colin is a... Complete shark, knows yep. his stuff, very tactical. Agreed. Um, and uh, something we're going to watch a little later is the men's final, and we're going to show you just how much of a specialist Colin really is. But um, anyhow, if you guys want to do a boot camp like that, destination, and um, yeah, you want to get away, check out Pickleball Getaways. Those guys do a great job. Deco Barr's mom is actually like the traveling agent and kind of handles all that stuff, and it's a family affair. And anyhow, those guys have done a great job. They've been doing that for a while. I've heard good things of people that have gone. And yeah. yeah, probably very good bang for your bang for your buck. For sure. They usually do like an all-inclusive resort, uh, pickle in the morning, act, uh, act activities in the afternoon. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's kind of that destination type camp format. This portion of the episode is sponsored by Selkirk TV. Welcome to Boiler Room Breakdown. Okay, uh, got ourselves a men's final here. Come on. Uh, this final was uh, was pretty good. Rye hits the return to Ben. Benny drops cross. Both guys kind of come in as a, as a team here. Speed up at right. Looking to close right, right out of the gate. Got herself a nice... Nice little exchange. Nice American hand speed battle there. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. A nice Man. slide by Colin. Looks like he just barely overcooks it. But you'll notice in the point when Matt was sped up on on the right and when Colin was sped up on, on the right, uh -huh. you really don't have to play a lot of forehand counters. By sliding yeah. and staying back in, it really simplifies the process and uh, you know helps your hand speed improve just a little bit. So they're both kind of specialists at doing that. Just barely overcooked that strong a little bit. It was a nice attack by Riley. Okay, point number two here. Got right serving to uh, Ben. Ben puts the return on that inside foot. We talk a lot about that. Yep. Make those guys fight over a that. hidden tunnel. Yeah. Speed up. Riley looks, looks to swing. Gets it out of his bubble. And see ya. Okay, okay. Let's, let's watch that again. Here. But this all starts with that that punch right there. Boom. Yeah. And you see here too, um, so Rye, Rye closes in with the, uh, so they so they drop, they drop, Rye closes in, swings, and then kind of starts cheating right. It's cheating right, clogging pinching, middle, yep. pinching, clogging, clogging, there it is. Sees it a little late, cleans his mess up, stays. I mean, as you as you see here, he was actually late on this ball, but since he was leaning right, right? I mean, look here. Catches yeah, it behind him a little bit. Exactly. He miss hits it. Catches that like two o'clock. But a couple of themes here, I think, you know, one thing that we teach is, you know, you start the mess, clean it up. So when Riley hits that first counter, he's sitting and waiting for that counter attack to come to the same location. And also Ben, who's thought to have 
best hands in the world are very close to it. Ben and Riley are probably right there one and two, and, and Matt Wright's right up there as well. But when you go at the body of somebody with a backhand, it can come screaming back in a hurry. But if you can get it in zone one, right. just outside their stance, it turns into more of a stab volley. And even Ben, with his great reflexes and, and strong hands, kind of mishits that a little, and it's an easy put away for Riley just finding that location. For all the viewers that do not follow the YouTube channel, make sure you guys uh, subscribe today. But uh, what KMAC is talking about is if we had zones in front of us, this is zone one, I'm a righty, zone one's off to my left hip, uh, zone two is left hip to belly button, zone three is belly button to right hip, and then zone four is over here. Um, obviously, we, we are, we're very efficient with the backhand punch and we can be very, very backhand heavy from zone one to zone three. Um, yeah, once you start flirting with stuff in here or just test the forehand or you've, you've gone right hip a couple times and you can go zone one, but anytime you speed up and the counterattack comes screaming back in hurry, you got to ask yourself like, did I go to the wrong spot? Am I, am I one dimensional? Is there a stamp on my forehead that says I'm coming in hot? Um, but usually it's, we just go to the wrong spot. Right. And we get, and we get thinking, we're like, gosh, that was such bad speed up or like their, <laughs> their hands are so good. I mean, are their hands good or are, are you just being one dimensional and just going at the wrong spot? Right. Yeah, because you can surprise people, do everything right, but if you hit it right at their paddle, they can just react For sure. and get down on that. But if you can jam them, if you can get them stabbing or reaching, right. normally the reply is is not as strong. Yeah, and I mean, uh, if you go zone two and three, or I guess if you go right at their body and you're looking to get away with it, it better be a bullet. You know, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I would I would put I put no, I yeah. put a put a hole through them um, and. Something to think about, uh, we, we've talked about this, there's two different types of counterattackers, right? There's the, there's the counterattacker that like, you know, stays on the kitchen line, they don't take a step back, they're probably more vulnerable for out balls. Right. And then there's the counterattacker that maybe takes a step back, likes to block a little bit, is a bit more selective with the block and the punch. Um, against the counter puncher that doesn't leave the kitchen line, if you try to speed up at lower paces and it didn't work and you were trying to hit your spots and it didn't work, <laughs> put a bullet through them. Disguise and, and, it and, and go them. hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if they're not gonna leave the kitchen line, make them, make them. <laughs> That's a good point. Make yeah. them, put put a bullet through them and say, have a piece of that. <clears throat> and and if you think that's bad etiquette, um, in, in rec play, um, it is bad etiquette. But if you're, if you're paying an entry fee and you're paying the PPA entry fee, <laughs> Okay, pretty sure you want to you want to kick ass and you want to get on the freaking podium. And so, <laughs> with that being said, you're gonna find whatever makes sense to you know to put yourself in a great position. Okay, okay, Rye serving to Colin. Colin played exceptionally well in this match, um, even though the Johns had lost the first two points. Working that stack formation to put Colin on the right and Ben on the left, where they're very comfortable. Looks like Rai likes to drive the third. Um, drive drop combo. Drive drop combo. Uh, little little note here for the viewers. If the if your opponents are not hurting you with their fourth, offer your drive um, and you're getting a short reply, it makes sense to just bang your third, uh, have your third in, enhance your fifth, right? And then, uh, and then you can use a fifth shot drop. Drive the third, drop the fifth. But if you drive and the volley comes screaming back in a hurry, it probably makes sense to want to drop and take your time as you come in because they because they could like pace. Okay. So Ben looks to be dictating a little bit here. He's getting a lot of forehands in the middle. Staying patient though. Mm -hmm. Nice. Riley wants to get that back over to Ben's backhand most of the time, but plays the percentage reset dink there. Look how much inside foot dinking there is here. I know we've never talked about this. <laughs> okay. A lot of inside yep. foot yep. dinking, waiting for the right the ball. See some push dinks here. We see we see Rye having a half volley. Ben's kind of in control of, of the dinking exchange right now, as he usually is. Oh, oh Colin, you stop. <laughs> you Full stop. Stretch. I mean, with with the fist bump like a like a boss. Wah. Watch this, watch this. Uh-huh. And don't you dare Rye, because I'm there. Look at that, look at that. Look at, that. Look at the stretch. Look at this stretch. I mean, dang good. How, how, how long is that guy in he the kitchen? He had to hold it and wait. <laughs> he had a little hang time there. Yeah, and, and for, for Colin to step around and to just do it off of one foot is pretty, pretty good. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Uh, sick point. Uh, it does not get better than that. We're going to play that for you, kid. Okay. Drive. Drop. Now we're in. Now we're just trying to find a gain here, right? Moving, yep. we see we see Benny like to go across. 
catches the outside edge of the ball. Yeah, but when Ben gets that ball outside of Riley's stance, it really forces him to go more middle most of the time without taking a lot more risk, mm -hmm. just like he does there. And Colin recognizes when this ball gets outside of his stance, he's taking that reset dink away, and that's what opens up the option for the Ernie. He's taking away the high percentage spot. Yeah. Right in a moment here. Colin will uh, work in it. Yeah. Sees that that gets outside his left foot, knows that it's natural to want to reset back in front of you. Great time to Ernie and take that reset. Well, and away. I mean, something to note here as well is that, I'm gonna actually stop right here, is that Rye, so uh, Ben's hitting push dinks, moving Rye around. Rye's resetting to Colin's left foot. Ben is still involved. Rye cannot find Colin. The one time he does try to find him, Colin Ernie's. <laughs> Just comes to show there's not much space to work with, right? No, I mean, and these guys are specialists. They you know, they know the geometry of the court. I mean, look where Ben's standing. He knows the riskiest shot for Riley moving to his left is to try to pull it back to the open court. So all the high percentage locations are just completely covered right now and great recognition of Colin to make his move. Well, Colin special right here. Come oh. on. Come on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Riley's like, how did that happen? Come on. <laughs> yeah. And that, Stays I mean. just out of the kitchen. Yeah, yeah for sure, sure, for sure. Okay, okay, we got uh, point number four. Oh, timeout. Time time oh yeah, <laughs> right. Football. When when is when is Mr. Wright not working over the official? I mean, when is know? he not at the official? I mean, for gosh sakes, all day. Okay, so this is game two six four. Nice. Oh, hands be battle. Nice, nice. Let's just watch that again. Um, okay, so we see we see Rye dropping over to Colin. Matt disconnects early. Yep, yep. Um, and you see here. Use it the person that, that finds a better spot in that hand speed battle. Use it ends up on top, yeah? Okay, so we see here, hand speed battle, right hip. Uh, yeah, and then right hip. I found a better right hip. You see that? <laughs> yeah, right hip. I'm, I mean, literally. I'll see your right hip and raise you one. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> Watch this. There you go. Hip, hip, Boom. hip, forehand. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, no, and, and, and I mean, come on. If that doesn't tell you to be backhand heavy, I don't know what does. For sure. I don't, I don't know what does. Now, um, yeah, I mean, if you're using a two-hander, I mean, Rye's still able to get that thing over there. Yeah, I mean, Rye is like forehand nine to three and then backhand, you know, down here. Yeah, he can do, but you're right. It's more about the height of the ball. So his zones are a little more complicated. No, 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 it's no, not no. just left and right, there it's is, up and down There is no well. zones. <laughs> there's, there's the up and down <laughs> zones as well. <laughs> right. But I mean, the whole yeah, point, this, is, this is Rye's zone here and then. <laughs> no, for sure. Top yeah. of the clock and the bottom of the Tough clock. Tough to teach. I don't, don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. But the whole point to me kind of started with, you know, Riley left the drop just a little bit up, kind of in the yellow zone for Colin. He recognized that even though Matt disconnected, Matt was just a little off the line. So he took a, a calculated risk thinking, okay, I'm in a better court positioning. Right. So I'm going to try to go through Matt. But that's risky. Matt has some of the fastest hands around. Right. He was able to time that initial counter pretty well, continue to move forward. And the longer that exchange goes... Matt probably has the advantage in hand speed uh, right. against Colin there. So calculated risk by Colin, but once Matt sticks that first uh, that first counter, advantage definitely tips over to his side. For sure. Good uh, play by Maddie, and good job there of like showing backhand heavy until you get a ball that's high enough. And Matt did a great job of sliding. He was kind of jammed in zone three and zone four. Slid, found a forehand, and clean up city. So How often get. is that? It's like you're in the middle yeah, of the yeah, exchange, yeah. and it's backhand, 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 and then you get ahead in the exchange, <laughs> and it's the forehand there. You have enough time to finish it yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Same sort of yeah, situation, yeah. but Colin opted for the reset. And, there. and, and let's just let's just let's just see see the specialist in transition here. And and campers, down, campers, hands. campers. If you don't leave, if you don't believe tip down does the job. Look at look at look at CJ in transition here. Tip down, another one gives it that tip perfect down. shape. Now yep. he's in. Takes his time. Inside foot. Inside foot. Right slip and looking to looking to find the you know, forehand, looking, looking to cook something up here. <laughs> I cook it. <laughs> okay, so this is about. Uh, I, I was telling K Mac this. So the first game and a half. Sick. So. Sick. Yeah. Shut up, Tyson. Uh, the first, <laughs> the first, the first game and a half. Um, Rye was on the left, and as we saw, uh, you know Ben was able to dictate, move the ball around, kind of keep Rye honest. Uh, as we see now, it's game two, it's eight, seven, but right is on the left. So this is when they made the switch. And on, 
to be honest, this uh, uh, definitely brought them back in the match and added a whole new element to the match. Yeah, I think it, it allows them to initiate more offense. I think with Matt on the left, he can speed up maybe a little better off the bounce than Riley can. But yeah, yeah. Uh, look, how, so look, how, look how tight this forehand volley is. Okay, so watch, watch, watch. So, and, and uh, this, is, this is something that, like, Rye and I used to use this play a lot last year. Rye would pull, Rye, Rye would be on the left, he'd dink aggressively and move the person, uh, move the person around cross court. If the person uh, in front of me uh, hit like a reset or hit a lifting to me, and they were still looking to recover and come back in the middle, as their feet were moving, it made sense to want to speed up at them and kind of beat them head to head with their feet not being established. Tougher to stick a counter yeah, for if your sure. lower I mean, base isn't established. Of course, uh, all your power, all your control comes from the ground up. So as we see here, I'm not gonna fool Benny. But Be <laughs> Benny's still moving. He's able to like gather his balance, get enough weight going forward, but Ben's still recovering. Punch, watch how tight this baby is. So, right. so here, so he punches. Okay, there's a forehand, finds it, tight, elbow tucked the in. Elbow. That's the thing, that's, that's the thing that's I noticed, it. the elbow. And then look at the finish, yep. literally. Yep. So, um, if you think taking big cuts 14 feet away does the job, it does not. You have to realize that the pace coming at you is, is, is plenty to work with and keep the theme of redirecting or absorbing pace versus generating. There's no need to generate, even though easier said than done <laughs> and it's nice to just hit the shit out of the ball. Uh, and it's nice to have like that big shotgun counter because most people don't want to come again if you do. Sure. But at the end of the day, uh, from a percentage standpoint, uh, do it the right way. When it looks like Ben to me, I mean, it looks like he's taking in fast motion. It looks like he, to me, it kind of looks like he is taking a big For swing. For sure, right. But when you look in slow motion, you see how compact everything is. And right. we talked about the elbow. The moment that elbow gets behind you and you start winding up, so tough to time it and get that contact point. Right. But if you can keep that log lodged in, you can follow through a little bit more, yeah. but as long as you're not taking it back, it just helps you time that ball so much better. Yeah, for sure. Ben's a, just about the best in the world. Yeah, that, probably. I mean, ball in the armpit, or if there's a rubber band, you know, that's tied around your body and it's got that arm lodged in, yeah, keep that sucker there. That's a knifey return. Yeah, I think it was moving. Oh, look at that. I mean, Benny. Get off center for it. <laughs> Get off center. Yeah, that's good. It's pretty yeah, athletic uh, right there. I mean, watch this. I mean, look how look how stupidly knifey this this uh, freaking return is. Got some pace on it. See ya. See ya. Didn't even see him. And I mean, obviously too, when somebody hits an, uh, somebody hits a return that aggressive, uh, you know, you're you're probably thinking small picture as Ryan was. He wasn't looking at big picture. Um, One also, I think what you know, doesn't complete this play. There's a lot of variables here, but when Ben goes up the line to Riley, I would say percentage wise, Riley's either probably gonna drop more middle or to maybe Collins inside foot or to Ben there. So he knows it's an either or. The moment he sees that coming to his side, he's probably gonna go. Unlikely that Riley would go across the body to Collins forehand if he leaves that a little bit up. Colin can can make him pay for it. So he's yeah. probably gonna go one or the other. Ben was already kind of clued into thinking that that was likely that he would drop up the line and right. quick enough to take that option away from him. It comes to show too that if you're aggressive up the line, whether it's a dink, it's a return, um, you know, or, or you just, you force your opponent to have to look at small picture and they don't have much time. Usually like the reset is back up the line. Like if I get pulled out of position and I'm, right. and I'm playing singles, I usually reset up the line. If I get pulled out of position as I'm playing doubles and I'm dinking, I usually reset up the line. Uh, if somebody Ernie's on me and like hits a push dink b b back behind my outside foot, I usually reset up the line. It's I mean, just a very awkward. No, it is. It to is to move for sure. one way yeah. and hit the ball across your body for sure. So I think there's 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 room and there's value, and there's something to be said with being a little sneaky when you're aggressive up the line, right? And your and your opponent's looking at small picture, like their vision is looking in the red zone versus up. Um, I may or may not have had that happen to me a couple times today <laughs> in Skinny. <laughs> I saw a similar Ernie a couple hours ago. <laughs> okay. Inside foot drop, drive, Con hits the crap out of it. Nice, gets one down. Okay, here we go, Bruin. Oh, that is bold. bold. Hey, Wright's that got one of his bold. own. He's got, he's, that got, is bold. he's got one of his own. So definitely uh, tougher to do when the dink is coming cross court. You really yeah, have to sure. time that well. That's, is, that's pretty, that's that's pretty something high level. That, something that Deckel does extremely well. It's kind of the best it's probably at that these days. Let's watch that again here. Okay, like this, working the drive drop, but he floats that drop and stays back, right? Stays back. No reason to rush in if it's a little high. Now they're neutralized and that's... Nice, that's good. Anticipation and execution. And for a finest. guy in his 40s, pretty good. Very good. Very good, very good.
Um, here we go. Put the return line again. Looks like, looks like Rye. Uh, yeah, that was sick. How, how Rye- I don't know how he countered from Yeah, there. no, the ball was in red. I mean, that was, that was complete. That's, that's some, that's some, <laughs> that's some Rafa Hewitt special. That's true, that's a, that's a Rafa special. And then gets the miss from Colin just because he's so surprised. No, I know, no, for sure. Riley I mean, I mean this is just complete location. chaos point. Yeah. Um, but something to be noted here is that uh, the Johns had four match points, or four match points, sorry, four, four game points, or three or four game points. And as we noted earlier, they put right on the left, different dynamic. Um, I, I believe this game was won because they put right on the left. They switched up that yeah, formation. Yeah, it's it's a, like you always tell, say at camps, look. Don't, don't lose, lose the, the same, same way. way. Don't lose the same way. No, K-Mag has heard this stupid story. <laughs> There's nothing worse than driving home in your car <laughs> thinking, oh my God, I lost the same way today. It's true, true. <laughs> have a plan A, have a plan B, right, be right. willing to try some Lose things. in a wide variety of ways sure. and make it a long death. Here we go. Okay, you guys watch this again. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Uh, that's called uh, chasing trash, but being aggressive with trash in red. Trans <laughs> transition trash in red. Okay. It's an advanced, advanced topic. <laughs> it's one of back. those where, you know, Riley's just reacting and trying no, to make a play happen. No, this just comes to show how stupidly athletic this guy no, is. Yeah, he knows that in hindsight, that's probably not a ball to speed up on, but no, with reflexes and athleticism, you can make really, up for a lot. I mean, his, his, his head is down, nose is down, and go. That was sick. But yeah, so one, one game two, and yeah, I mean game three, uh, Wright and Newman were up one five. Yeah, it was tied early. They, they were, the, yeah. they had, they had some momentum. Oh, stop, stop. CJ, CJ. CJ. What? what? CJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that was. Hang, hang on, little hang indecision, on. Right? A little indecision. Hang on. Okay, so Benny Benny pops this one up, and which doesn't happen. Speeds up at Colin. Colin is not ready. I mean, and, and, and kind of and, between a block and yeah. a counter there. His and and this is the few times where you'll see Colin yep. not quite established, not quite balanced, moving back. It looks like obviously he's just not ready for the speed up. Yeah. And, he, and he's probably thinking, Ben, what are you doing? You haven't popped a ball right, up the right. whole match, and now you pop one up. Well, and I think you know, it, it, this is probably one point where some of the the mental side of it. Colin doesn't do as well, in my opinion here. The whole match, he was spot For on. Sure. But here, no, he if you notice kind of why he pops this one up so bad, is he's sliding to punch the backhand. I don't think he needs to when the speed up comes from that location, because it's a little more cross from Yeah, it, right, right, right. But right. a lot of times, if you're sliding aggressively, that ball's going out anyway. For so sure. I think he could have stayed his a little more stationary with his base. Probably either would have blocked or countered better early on. And then what loses the point is where he probably should slide and counter. He kind of does this little swat at it one hand or forehand. But right. for the most part, Colin is a specialist yeah, for, for sure. not doing some of these things. But we'll watch how it goes wrong a little bit for him here. Yeah, and and something that Colin displayed throughout the match is that uh, anytime he was in a hand speed battle, it looked like he had plenty of time to work with. And this scenario looks like he doesn't have a whole lot right. of time. And and what we mean by that, and I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people who understand this, but uh, you know, if you get comfortable in a select area, you feel like you just have a lot of time to work with. Yeah. Uh, really good counter attackers or people with really good hands trust that they can stay home and when somebody comes at them, they can stay home and they can wait and then choose the right side and not be so premature with their hands. Um, as we see here, Colin's just a little jumpy and probably because the ball was just up a little high. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you said, he's not used to Ben popping it up. And right here, right. Yep. Right, <laughs> right there. Here. He tried to get a little creative finding a forehand. Like, I'm sick of playing defense. I want a forehand. <sighs> okay. Okay, we'll go We'll go last one here. Yeah, this, this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. CJ at his finest. That's a sexy little pickup. Uh huh. Pushy, pushy. Speed up. This one's stupid. Hey! Uh huh. Where's where's our gain here? Let's get that out of here. So and, and they actually tried to do that a couple times, and that's what's that's what's tough. Uh, they they and and Rye did this early. Uh, oh no no sorry sorry. Rye did this a little later in like games three and four. Um, but you know Ben's moving uh, both Rye and Matt around, and Ben's looking to uh, take his forehand dink in the middle and and roll it not inside out but like dominant side cross court and go back behind right. 
Uh, right, obviously, as you see here. So Benny's, Benny goes back behind him, right speeds up. It's right into the forehand. Yep. So I think, I mean, easier said than done. I mean, I'm sitting here on the sideline watching, but uh, I would I would honestly take that speed up back behind Ben. I would not go forehand, even though he is, I mean, it's tough because he's moving and he's sliding. Uh, anyhow, they they probably lost four or five points with Ben rolling the forehand dink inside out, or not inside out, dominant side, and trying to pull them out of position, and they were like taking a ball out of the air and trying to speed up at Benny's forehand, and Benny sat and trying came, to go more middle or through yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah, I think the the only thing I I saw with those guys on the right was just choosing a different speed up or choosing a different location that wasn't at Benny's Benny's forehand, trying to go back behind his left hip or. Trying to go to zone one. Um, and like, I, you know, and it seems like the pattern is when people have had success speeding up at Ben, it is when they can find zone one. Because he's so leaning middle all the time. It's true, it's true. If you can get it he, outside the body, leaning sure. the wrong way, that's when it becomes a stab volley where none of, of us are good, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but like you said, he covers body so well with the backhand and he keeps that elbow in so well for the forehand. It's tough to find It's it. really tough from zones yeah. two to he's, four he's clean that to up. ever find any space there. Yeah. And yeah. just wanted to point out too, yeah. it's kind of tough to kind of realize or appreciate why Ben can take over where other people can't. To me, hang on, hang on. it's not just his balance, but uh, it's his comfortability with using all of the spins. You know, so when he's pulled out wide for the for the backhand, it's because he can take the outside edge of the ball and use top spin and get that ball back cross court. But sometimes when he's pinching middle and that ball gets a little bit behind him or he's reaching, he can still pull that back cross court because he uses back spin as well. So he understands each side which type of spin to use to stay in control and not let that ball get behind him. Yeah. It's like as he starts pinching Speed middle, up. okay. Pick up. That was a sick little pickup yeah, was. Ball got back behind Colin. Okay. And and one that's a backspin shot. Yeah. This one's gonna be a none of their backspin. And he recovers and swats. Yep. Yeah. And and something that, that Benny will do, he'll he'll dink, he'll go inside foot on the guy. Or like if he's playing, no, sorry, if he's playing uh, mixed, he'll go inside foot on the girl, or just like what he's doing to right. He'll go inside foot and then he'll dink, dink aggressively, go inside foot, and then he'll dink aggressively. And the same cross look court. outside foot and Open, close. Opens up the forehand. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, yeah, just, you know, if Matt is, or if uh, if Ben is gonna play middle that hard, we've got to go back behind him. And I would, I would assume the next, next turning, they're gonna be making that adjustment. But Benny's playing so much off of Collins' inside foot and they're speeding up middle. Yeah, um, just playing right into his hands. Obviously yeah. that's one point, but you're right. For sure. I would imagine the adjustment would be to try to wait for your moments and test him in zone one a little bit more often to keep him honest. Yeah, and he's actually known to block a decent amount if he's not quite there it's true. On, on the back He's pretty side. disciplined that if he's moving and his feet aren't set, he's very comfortable blocking the first one, waiting for his feet to get set before he uh, gets in that firefight. Ryan looks to Ernie. Going for the left-handed Ernie. Nothing there. Ben just flicks this up. It's a little high. It's <laughs> <laughs> really high. Uh, open space. I'm just going to flick it in there. As you go with the body. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's just the wrong spot. Yeah. You know? it's zone, Easier zone said two, than done. Zone two doesn't get it done. No, it doesn't. Zone two it doesn't, doesn't get it done. It it's got to be outside his body. It doesn't. This guy comes back in a hurry. Oh, he got the top of the tape. That's what happened. But yeah, watch this. So there's like an opening in the middle. Benny's in red. Right, kind just of barely it gets a paddle <laughs> on as he's sliding the other way to recover. Okay, we have um, uh, Foot Solutions PPA tournament coming up next weekend. Super excited for it, playing with Lauren Stratman and uh, Jocelyn, hoping for a better men's run and happy to uh, play my first tournament this year in mixed. I'll, I'll be playing some singles as well. KMAC will be there uh, later on in the weekend. We're, we're teaching a camp on that Monday, Tuesday. I have a crazy schedule after that, go directly to Minnesota. After Minnesota, do uh, a Palm Desert camp for two days, and then we go directly to Valencia, which is a club like an hour and a half north of Palm Springs. 
Um, anyhow, so what I'm trying to say is that I will not be doing episode 33 for a couple weeks. So hope this guy or hope this uh, episode ties you over. Tyson won't let me do an episode by myself, yeah. yet, unfortunately. Not going to happen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kyle's never asked. Okay? He's, he's never asked me. Uh, K-Mac, any uh, last words here for No, no, just uh, enjoyed it. Uh, always fun, you know, geeking out on some points. Oh, yeah. uh, and excited, excited. Uh, we've got another all-star lineup with our teaching crew after the, the PPA in Phoenix. So yep. uh, myself, you, Mr. Sperling, and then uh, Mr. Mr. Evans. We've got yeah. Morgan Evans as well. So it should be a, should be a fun, fun group. Uh, we have 26 signups, looking to get 32. Um, if you guys want to get K-Mac, or if you guys want to get McGuffin, <laughs> or if you want to get uh, Morgan Evans, or if you want to get John Sperling, Sperling, okay, <laughs> get your ass over to my website and sign up, okay? It's going to be a badass camp Monday, Tuesday at Legacy. Uh, Legacy is a brand new facility in Mesa, Arizona, uh, largest sports complex in the country. Uh, just built. I don't know how many pickleball courts there are, thirty or forty, but I haven't checked it out yet, um, so I'm excited to see it in person. Our man, um, uh, Cade Nemoff, is the head pro there. If you guys are in Arizona looking for a lesson. Looking for, and uh, ladies, if you're looking for a lesson from a good looking man, uh, get over to Legacy and see our boy Caden. Uh, my name is Tyson McGuffin. This is The McGuffin Show. Uh, this is episode 32. I will see you guys in episode 33.